Scientists probably aren't going to enjoy this video. It's full of all kinds of things that cause them sleepless nights. We're talking unexplained mysteries, problems that can't be solved, and discoveries that somehow seem out of place. For everybody who isn't a scientist, though, it's a fascinating look at puzzles both ancient and modern. Let's get started. In 2016, UNESCO announced that the mysterious dolmens of Antiquera in Spain were to be given world heritage status. It's a fitting recognition for these ancient wonders, and it's to be hoped that the extra attention they receive because of it might kickstart the process of solving the mysteries they present. There are three monuments at this ancient site, the Vieira Dolmen, the Menga Dolmen, and the Tholos of El Romero. Most historians and archaeologists agree that they were built during the Bronze Age, some 5,000 years ago. Each of them aligns with the summer and winter solstices, but it's thought that their alignment with the curiously shaped mountain Peña de las Enamorados was just as important to their builders. The heaviest of the stones at the site weighs 180 tons. The heaviest of all the stones at Stonehenge in England is just 40 tons. Scientists have no idea how stones of this size were transported to the site and then manipulated into place because the stone isn't local. Each of the dolmens is an ancient burial site, but the identities of the many people buried inside them are unknown. While we're talking about things that happened 5,000 years ago, that's also about the same time that a so-called graveyard of the giants was laid down in China. The skeletal remains of the individuals buried in it were discovered in July 2017. They wouldn't be considered giants by modern standards, but the people who lived here appear to have been more than six feet tall more often than they weren't. That's an unusual trait in the China of today and is likely to have been an even more unusual trait 5,000 years ago during China's Neolithic era. How so many of these unusually tall people came to be gathered in one place close to what's now Jiaojia village in Jinan city is unknown. There are 205 graves in total, buried amid 104 houses in what might be up to 20 sacrificial pits. It's likely that these people were members of the Longshan culture, also known as the Black Pottery culture, who arrived here 6,000 years ago and stayed for around 2,000 years. Scientists think that their unusual height might have been due to low population density and access to protein-rich big game animals, but that's far from proven. The ruins of Casa Grande, which are close to Coolidge in Arizona, USA, are recognized as an American national monument. The structure is the greatest and best-known work of the Hokoham people, who historians like to call the Masters of the Desert. They lived here during the 13th century and displayed advanced knowledge of construction and engineering, creating irrigation canals and caliche structures in the middle of the desert. Casa Grande is the most accomplished of those caliche structures. It's a watchtower four stories high and made of layer after layer of caliche, weighing over 3,000 tons in total. The walls are crumbling now, but they still line up with the positions of celestial bodies at important ceremonial times of the year. The roof was once supported by juniper, pine, and fir beams that came from more than 50 miles away. There are local trees in the desert, so using this wood rather than the desert trees was a deliberate choice made for reasons we can't comprehend. We also have no idea what actually went on inside Casa Grande when it was in use. Mount Sakane in Russia is a sight to behold no matter why you're looking at it. But there's more to this spectacular sight than just the mountain. The slopes of the mountain are covered in strange, hard to explain markings and indentations. And there are those who believe that at least some of the indentations are actually huge handprints. Looking at them, it's easy to see why. Applying some common sense to the question though, they can't be. Just the middle finger alone on the largest of the alleged handprints is taller than an average man. Very little archaeological research has been carried out at the site of the mountain because it's in such a remote location. It's in the middle of nowhere between Doldurga and Taptanye, and lacking any roads to bring visitors here. The limited research that has been done says that the handprints are nothing more interesting than a natural rock formation, but the shapes look too specific for that. 
We're not suggesting that they're genuine handprints, but perhaps they're massive carvings of hands scraped into the rock by a forgotten civilization for unknown reasons. There's still much we don't know about the pyramids of Egypt. Whenever the technology used by archaeologists advances, someone always returns to the pyramids to see if that technology leads to any breakthroughs. In 2015, an international team of scientists and architects conducted a joint survey of the pyramids of Giza and identified thermal anomalies deep inside the structures. Higher than expected temperatures were recorded in three adjacent stones in an impossible to reach area at the very bottom of the Great Pyramid. Although empty spaces, different building materials, and internal air currents have all been suggested as possible causes for the anomalies, nobody's been able to say for sure. Further anomalies were detected in the Great Pyramid's upper half. The discovery came when the research team used infrared thermography to scan the pyramids as they heated up during sunrise, and then again when the sun went down and the limestone cooled. It's a virtual certainty that there are rooms and chambers inside the pyramids that we haven't been able to reach yet. But why would those chambers be warmer than the structure around them? Unfortunately, it might be several years before we find out. Speaking of Egyptian discoveries, it was once thought that mummification was reserved only for the royals, high-ranking officials, and senior religious leaders. In recent years, we've had to reevaluate that theory. In fact, in January 2019, it was announced that a mummy that had been misunderstood for almost a century was the personal eye doctor of Ptolemy II. The mummy was taken from Cairo in questionable circumstances in 1925 and brought to Spain. Back then, the 2,300-year-old mummy was thought to be female. After conducting a topographical analysis, scientists are now sure that the mummy is actually Nes Pamedu, who was both a doctor and a priest and lived in Alexandria between 2,300 and 2,200 years ago. The scan revealed eight plaques on different parts of the mummy's wrapping, one of which is a representation of Thoth, the god of ophthalmologists. It's rare to see this deity on a wrapping, and there are very few reasons for the plaque to be placed on a body unless the body is that of an ophthalmologist. This doesn't explain why Nespamedu's remains were crowned with a wig, nor why his face was painted after death. So there are still mysteries to be solved here. The fact that an Egyptian pharaoh who lived more than 2,000 years ago even had a personal eye doctor is a reminder of how advanced the Egyptians were when it came to medicine. As is this next discovery. It's a prosthetic wooden toe. And it's thought to be one of the oldest prosthetics of any kind anywhere in the world. It's now in the British Museum, but it was found on a hillside tomb in Sheikh Abd Kurna close to Luxor. Analysis of the artifact has revealed it to be around 3,000 years old. Archaeologists briefly thought that the toe had been added after death so its female owner would be complete in the afterlife, but on closer inspection, it's obvious that the toe was adjusted and reshaped several times over the years to make it more comfortable for its owner as their body and shape changed during their lifetime. It's likely that it was fitted when they were a young adult and stayed with them until they passed away. Between the anatomic perfection of the toe and the comfortable leather strap it came with, it would have enabled this woman to walk as if she wasn't missing a toe at all. We're leaving the Egyptians behind now, but we're still talking about mummies. To be more specific, we're talking about the mummy of an ancient Persian princess who was discovered in November 2000. She was dressed up in a beautiful golden crown and mask and placed inside a wooden sarcophagus. The whole sarcophagus was then placed inside a larger carved stone coffin. Helpfully, she was buried wearing a breastplate complete with an inscription that reads, I am the daughter of the great King Xerxes. I am Raguni. She was the first Persian mummy ever to be found and was said to be 2,600 years old. Here's the twist. Almost everything we just told you turned out to be a lie. Although the find was reported at face value at the time, including all those details, it later transpired that the mummy was a fake. 
The grammar on the breastplate wasn't quite right, and there were anomalies in the mummification process. A further scientific study of the body showed that it had been dead for no more than four years at most and died of a broken neck. Either somebody stole a body to create this elaborate fake, which briefly fooled some of the world's greatest experts, or someone was killed by the people who pulled off the con. The crime's never been solved. Kajurgan Minaret in the village of Minor, Uzbekistan is a beautiful landmark and an impressive site. It'd be even more impressive if you were looking at it 800 years ago because it was probably twice as tall as it is now. The 12th century minaret was built with an unusual wave-like style that narrows towards the top, thus playing with the perspective of viewers on the ground and making it seem like it reaches higher into the sky than it really does. The body of the minaret is made from 16 herring-boned columns, banded by 16 arches, and covered in elaborate inscriptions. It seems that the minaret may have been double or triple length, hence the damage at the top of the 70-foot-tall tower where the upper portions have been broken off. Archaeologists think that it may originally have been around 150 feet tall. Presuming that it continued to get narrower as it got taller, the minaret might have once looked like a giant needle. The informative inscriptions tell us that the one-of-a-kind minaret was designed by Ali ibn Muhammad of Sarax, which is now part of Turkmenistan. It also tells us that it was built between 1108 and 1109 during the rule of Sultan Sanjar. Sadly, nobody thought to add a new inscription to tell us what happened to the rest of it. We know we said we were getting off the topic of Egypt, but we're going back there now to look at a very unusual mummy. In 2015, scientists were surprised to discover an Egyptian mummy with a head full of deliberately placed dirt. The 3,200-year-old mummy was scanned using computed tomography at the Stanford University School of Medicine in California. The scan told the scientists a lot of things, but the most surprising finding was that its skull cavity still contained the brain of the deceased person, along with a strange dark sediment. The unidentified material was added to the brain case at the time of the mummification, but the brain was left inside. Scientists haven't seen this before and speculate that whoever mummified the body encountered difficulties while trying to remove the brain, although brain removal was less common during the New Kingdom period. The overall impression is that the process was carried out by someone who was experimenting with different mummification techniques, so the adding of the strange material to the skull may have been part of that experimentation. It's unlikely that they would have been allowed to experiment on the remains of anybody perceived as important, which begs the question of who this person was and why they were mummified. We've almost touched on the topic of brain surgery, so let's look back on a discovery from 2014. Two bodies were found in Siberia's Altai Mountains that year, both of which showed evidence of healing after undergoing trepanation between 2300 and 2500 years ago. One of the skulls belongs to a man who died in his 40s and suffered a heavy trauma to the skull, leading to a hematoma. Trepanation would have removed the hematoma, and evidence suggests that the man went on to recover and continue living for several years after the process. This primitive kind of brain surgery has never before been recorded in bodies from this period in Siberia, and it's made historians wonder whether these ancient Siberians knew a thing or two about the Hippocratic teachings of ancient Greeks. If they did, the experts would like to know how. Siberia is thousands of miles away from Greece. Is this evidence of the nomadic tribes of Siberia having contact with the most advanced medical centers of the ancient world? Or is it merely an example of parallel development, with the Pazirics reaching the same conclusions as the Greeks at the same time? There are hundreds of cave impressions in the Foz Coa Archaeological Park in Portugal but none as impressive as the Horse of Mazuko. It dates back to the Upper Paleolithic era, which means it's at least 12,000 years old and might be far older. 
The horse is enormous, measuring 24 feet from nose to tail and displaying well-defined features. The ancient artists who created it must have spent a lot of time on it. There are more than 100 painted or engraved panels in the archaeological park, with over 5,000 ancient engravings in total. Despite that, it's one of the least well-known UNESCO World Heritage Sites in Europe. That's a shame, because there are few more beautiful. Anyone who visits the horse and its fellow engravings won't just be stunned by the quality of the work, they'll also be stunned by the breathtaking views of the surrounding area. It's no wonder these ancient people attached so much importance to the location. Sadly, we know almost nothing about them other than the artwork they left behind for us to enjoy. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.